Hello everyone, and this is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling on April 26, 2016. And, well, they build this as the Sacrifice Show, and they, they've been building up to it for quite some time with the, the Michael Bennett, with the Michael Bennett versus EC3, and the Tyrus and Drew Galloway match. They also build the whole um, ta uh, tag team title situation, and the uh, King of the Mountain title situation. So let's go off and start just right at the beginning of the show, first of all. Without fanfare, too, Tyrus is just out there. It's like calling out Drew Galloway for their match right here, right now. It's like they made this seem far less important than what it was. Like they had built up this whole aspect of the Bound for Gold and everything like that for a long period of time, and then they just have Tyrus out there right off the bat. Uh, the match itself was okay, but. Uh, I did not think the match itself was that bad, but the whole aspect of, okay, Tyrus doesn't even get his own entrance out there, he's just out there right at the beginning of the show. No fanfare to it, no nothing, no uh, special uh, intro or anything. Just go, have your match. Mm -hmm. And and everything on that aspect, it, it took away from that match in every sense of the word. I... Uh, I do like how they played up the uh, the rib injury angle throughout the entire thing. Uh, they did do like they did do some good things in there, but it got taken away by the aspect of how they de depicted this match right from the get go. It's like, oh, this is just here. This is your world title. Why are you making it just feel like, oh, it's just here. That's it. That's all it is, and, and everything in that aspect. I felt like they. Uh, they did a pretty bad, uh, pretty bad job on that aspect, but on the aspect of the match itself, they did pretty good in, in that sense. So you have an up and a down to that, uh, they could have, uh, where I feel like they could have done better. Now, uh, up next was the Maria Gail Kim segment, which led into the match with Rosemary. Actually, I kind of like this. Uh, they did a pretty good job here of depicting the aspects of uh, Maria becoming the new leader of the knockouts and basically going to do everything in her power to um, get under the skin of Gail Kim in, the, in this case. Uh, and of course, Gail comes out there and kind of blames her for the aspects of Rosemary and decayed. Uh, uh, kidnapping her from the week before, which eventually led into the uh, match with Rosemary itself. Like, I even like parts of the promo saying, it's like, uh, is that she's going to change the knockouts division, but still, like, still on the aspects of, like, oh, yes, I'm still going to let you wrestle. Like, I, I, I like those little depictions of how Maria comes off as a character right now. And of course, Maria throughout the well, well, uh, on a couple of occasions throughout the match, gets involved and distracts the Kim, which eventually allows for Rosemary to pick up the victory. I like where they're going with this story, it, it, since it's just beginning with the aspects of Maria becoming the leader of the Knockouts. Uh, it only serves it more to have her uh, still getting one over on people like Gail Kim and everything like that, and it will eventually lead into the payoff. So. Again, not a bad way of going. I thought this was actually pretty a uh, pretty good segment of the show. Uh, and not a bad match between Gail Kim and Rosemary as well. Um, up next was the Fact of Life segment with Eli Drake. Well, it, it got a storyline going with the Birdman's go, uh, for that. And that's pretty much all I can really say about it. I didn't really like this segment uh, at all it just uh, Eli Drake's a good talker and what he was giving here was crap and he kind of turned it into okay but it just didn't come off all that good in, in there uh, the whole dummy button was um, not something I really liked all that much not on the aspect of it being degrading or anything it just came off as well, dumb in that sense. It just it didn't make much sense to it. Though I do like the aspect that every time you hit the bunny, it was uh, the button. It was um, it would say it, it would say dummy, and yeah, and then he would also continue on with it and say yeah himself. It was that that portion of it was kind of good. Like I said, he 
took a crap uh, a crappy type segment and turned it okay there was a few things about it that i actually liked and it's it uh, wasn't bad in the end on that uh, or it wasn't that bad in the end but it could have been a lot worse. Like I said, Eli Drake's very good on the mic. His bit with the romance was not bad as well. I like how he continually chastised Jesse Goddard for uh, wanting to be with Robbie, e, uh, tagging with Robbie e instead of sticking around with him. And they could have done uh, done other things while uh, while uh, Jesse was riding Eli Drake's coattails. I thought that was pretty good. It, came off decent in in that sense but overall the segment not a big fan of it but i bet we'll be seeing more of it in the end uh the match with decay and beer money the valley of shadows match well basically just a uh basically just a uh hardcore match or an extreme rules type match a no disqualification match with the lighting being a little bit more dim in the area which you know at least plays off of the aspect of uh, aspect of how dark uh, decay is in inside of there. But overall, the match was a pretty good match. It was a pretty good no disqualification style match, and uh, what you were basically expecting from the from beginning to end, it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, you figured. And of course, you figured you know uh, Decay was going to win this one with it being uh, Bobby Roode's last night uh, on the show. And again, like I said, I felt like they did a pretty good job of this segment uh, and everything uh, towards the uh, towards the end of the match. And then having Decay uh, go over and win the tag titles was actually a good way. They they basically built up to Decay winning those tag titles in some way, shape, or form, and. And that, of course, is where they went with it. And we'll see where they go with Decay afterwards. Uh, overall, not a bad segment here. I actually did thoroughly enjoy uh, this segment. And I thought they came off pretty well in the end. And it was a good way of uh, getting Bobby Roode out of Impact Wrestling at this time. Um, up next was Bram and Eric Young. And this became like a false count anywhere, no disqualification match out of nowhere. Like, I don't even know they necessarily announced it, that it would be that style of match, but that's what it ended up being. Um, not a bad match in the end, uh, but overall didn't, doesn't mean too much. Like, I feel like they did a better job with Bobby Roode than they did with Eric Young leaving in, in this case. Like, you had the backstage promo with Bobby Roode and James Storm talking about their match. Uh, and you have um, and you have Bobby Roode talking about it. It's like, you know what? If we're going down, we're going to go down without a fight. Uh, or, or we're going to go down with a fight and everything like that. It, like, I feel like they did a better job with that than they did with Eric Young. Um, it felt like the match was just kind of there in, in that sense. Um, not, like I said, not a bad match, but... Uh, a match that just, it, it just didn't feel like it worked, uh, uh, worked in the end for me. Uh, like I said, also it was like, okay, this became a no disqualification, false count anywhere match. Why? Huh? Uh, okay. I know they play off the psycho characters or everything like that, but, uh, I don't think they even really announced it last week. That was going to be like a no disqualification, false count anywhere match. It was just like, oh, this is what this is now. I'm like okay, okay. <laughs> uh, this leads into the Jeff Hardy, Rebby Sky segment with Rockstar Spud. There, um, not a bad segment. I liked how they, uh, I liked how Rebby came off on Jeff Hardy and everything like that. I also, like you know, Jeff is at least good at selling uh, the factors, even if he is like if he is actually hurt, but if he's not hurt, he's good at selling everything to uh, limping around. You know, showing the effects of an I quit match and I felt like they did a pretty good job in that sense but also uh, the aspect of Rebby coming out there and chastising Jeff the entire time uh, <clears throat> was a, a good way of going and again I uh, again I kind of expected them to continue on with the storyline but seriously an I quit match should be the ending of a storyline not the middle but we'll see where they go with everything uh, down the road here, and we'll see what happens with Matt Hardy coming. Uh, with Matt Hardy coming back, I like like how uh, Rebby describes like she's scared because like Matt Matt's like a colder 
doesn't talk anymore, different type of human being. So we'll see what they do with Matt Hardy when he comes back into the fold and comes back to television in that case. Uh, so this leads now into the main event of the night, which is EC3 and Michael Bennett. No disqualification, no count out. Basically, pinfall or submission match. Uh, pin, uh, winner must be decided by pinfall or submission. And they've been playing off the whole aspect of uh, EC3 hasn't been pinned or submitted for the 30 months that he's been around. Um, the match was really good with a finish that was really bad. Uh, just really, really, really bad. Uh, I know they want to continue this storyline. I know they wanted to eventually get EC3 pinned or submitted and have him overcome those odds eventually to uh, come out on top. But with a roll-up that was basically a countered submission hold, that was a little weak. It was a little weak. I think they could have gone with a more interference route in the sense of, you know, uh, Maria causing the interference, distracting, and then uh, Michael Bennett could get a knockout type style victory. In, in that sense, like he hadn't been pinned or submitted for thirty months. You don't end it with a roll up. At least in my mind, you don't end it with a roll up. Even like think of how they ended Goldberg's streak in WCW. Yes, it was by shenanigans and. A taser, but the power bomb finished it. Like, okay, that finished the match itself. Uh, it wasn't a aspect of, oh, Kevin Nash got a random roll up after that or anything like in that sense. No, he still had to finish him with the power bomb. Uh, that's where they probably should have gone here, but they decided to go with a more weaker style finish. And yes, it does keep the storyline going. It's like, oh, he only won by a roll up. Or by a fluke in that sense, but they could have played off more of the interference and then eventually allowing that to uh, cause Michael Bennett to get the knockout blow in that sense or something in there to end that portion of it. Um, but overall, like I said, the match itself was good. The match itself was good. I just felt the the ending was weak uh, to it. Um, so overall. Ups and downs this week for Impact Wrestling. I mean, overall, the show wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. Eli Drake showed that he can take what would be a crappy segment and at least make it okay uh, with that uh, Fact of Life segment. And uh, now he's starting some kind of thing with the bromance since uh, Grado and Muhammad Shira will be doing a thing with Al Snow here. Uh, so we'll see where they go with everything. Um, but like I said, overall... Not bad. The matches, the matches like once they got started, were good matches. But in the terms of story, some of these matches kind of failed in, in that sense, or they were deemed less important when they should have been deemed as a little bit more important. Uh, but overall, not a bad impact this week. And that is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling. And I thank you guys for watching.